Couples who have moved in together. What surprised you most about living with a male female? Methods of storage. Me. However method to madness her. Organized. Several conversations have gone like this. Me where is my blue notebook it was on this shelf under my components box. Her I cleaned up and organized everything. Me okay where is it? Apparently the cat I raised since she was a kitten and loved more than life itself is more than willing to abandon me and love someone else much more in a blink of an eye. If you and your partner are in different rooms one of them will randomly decide to just check in by opening the door. Smile and then going back to their separate room. After living with him for 4 years. I opened a drawer of his dresser. And it was empty. All of it. Apparently he thought it was my extra dresser. He doesn't use a dresser. Clothes get washed and put into a clean clothes hamper. He puts socks and underwear in his bedside table. Now I'm wondering what other furniture in our house is empty? Learning that there's a wrong way to fold towels apparently. He peed in the sink. That's all. My husband will take the dog for a wee out back before bed. And I'm pretty sure he pees off the edge of the deck in solidarity. Or maybe just to remind the dog it's his house. Edit. Showed this to my husband. He says I don't have to have a dog to pee outside. How different our versions of Ossiclean are. How often I'd be helping her find her car keys. Eventually. I put up a hook that I was able to get her in the habit of using. Made me tear up a little at the time. But a couple weeks after we split I remember getting a text from her that said I miss being able to find my keys. I was told that we would start arguing and being miserable. It ended up feeling like a super awesome constant sleepover. Don't let people scare you into not moving in with a significant other if that is what you both want. That your partner may follow you around the house. Just because. The hair. Man. It gets everywhere. Seriously. I've found her hair wrapped around my balls and had to untangle it. I was almost convinced she was putting it there when I was sleeping too with me. How much I actually talk to myself. I never had any roommates. Aside from one for like the first two weeks in college before I got moved to a single room. So I was used to just talking to myself out loud like nothing. After we moved in together and she kept asking who are you talking to? And did you say something? I realized that I actually talked to myself quite a bit. I didn't realize that I'll just say things out loud that humor me or I find interesting. Like driving down the road and I see a funny license plate. I'll just say it out loud. My so started laughing and asked why I was saying like one word phrases randomly. I asked my brother about it and he was like. Yeah you've always done that. She's good at playing Tetris and very organized. I was living with my parents since I traveled for work and only made it home one or two weekends a month. She moved in with me at my parents house. We had one room to store stuff. A bedroom. We bought things we'd need when we moved out when we saw deal too good to pass up and she stored them. I realized she was good when we had to make 4 trips to get all our stuff out. 4 trips. This girl had boxes inside boxes inside boxes. She utilized every inch available in our room to stack items. We just bought a house and still have some boxes left to unpack. I will call her at work and say something like hey. Do you remember that blue paper clip I like to use? I can't find it. She will tell me which room. Which box. What container. And what is beside it. Just in case I still can't find it. I have never observed my wife put a bobby pin in her hair. I have found thousands of bobby pins in our house. My wife has really long beautiful hair. I was not prepared to find that all in my butt and crotch regions as often as I do. I could never be prepared to have one stuck in my ass and have to pull it out like some mangy dog. I've never felt more violated or unclean than when I felt those hairs basically floss my lower GI tract. Somehow I swallowed a few and passing them is a really disgusting feeling. She has told me that hasn't happened to her too which makes it weirder. My ex-wife had really long hair and I was constantly pulling 3 foot long strands out of my mouth. 
The worst was a maddening itch in my eye that I kept rubbing and rubbing until I realized I was pulling a hair out of my eye socket. Inch after inch I pulled out. Feeling it tugging from under my eyeball. How the did it get in there? It's no mystery. The is just everywhere. How specific I have to be when giving instructions to do something. Like instead of saying wash the sheets I have to say wash and dry the sheets and pillowcases and put new sheets on the bed. Edit. Thanks for the silver. And for all those saying he's dumb a child I should leave him I have four brothers and all but one would have done the exact same thing he did. I was hoping he would at least put the sheets in the dryer too. But whatever. This is exactly what it is like being a programmer. I always knew women went through TP faster than men. But I never knew how much faster they did. It got to the point. I'd just grab a pack of TP whenever I went to the store for any reason. We may not be out at home. But we will be soon I reckoned. And I was never wrong about that. A lot of it's been mentioned. Bobby pins everywhere. Where everywhere. She was not a clean person. I did the cleaning. But one thing that hasn't been mentioned is just the sheer amount accessories that she had. Tons of makeup and beauty products. A vanity full of of it. Plus more. Lots of clothes. Tons of clothes she didn't wear. I need to get bobby pins. I'm out. No you're not. Go to literally any spot of the house and look down. The clothes thing bothers me more than anything tbh. The whole closet is her clothes. All but one drawer of the dresser is her clothes. Her favorite thing to wear? My shirts. Everything has a decorative pillow on it. They are too small to be used for anything. And I'm not allowed to throw them on the floor or pile them all on one chair. The bed has a bunch. And a long tube thing. I'm not allowed to whack her with the tube thing. Where did these come from? Why do we need them? If they're just in the way. Can we put them in storage? No? Okay. Babe, whatever you want. I once pulled Chewbacca out of the bathroom sink. Semicolon. Edit. Thanks for the silver. Definitely the food. I'd eat ramen and canned foods all the time when I was living alone. Now I get spoiled with home cooked food. The best part though is she's been teaching me to cook. I love our cooking school sessions after work. Edit thank you for the silver. I'm genuinely happy that I'm able to make her home cooked meals now when she really needs me. For me. How subtle the need for alone time crept up on me. I wasn't unhappy in the slightest and moving in was natural. But over time I felt myself becoming irritable and it turned out that I tend to get that way when I don't have time to myself. Because I went from being alone in my room after work in my parents house to being around my so pretty much every minute I'm not at work or driving. So I found myself with someone almost 24 stroke 7. And it took a toll. Thankfully once I recognized that. I always thought of women as tidy and organized. That was until I moved in with one. I swear I spend 20 minutes a day helping so tidy up the mess she creates in the first hour every morning. Then another 10 minutes every day searching for brushes, hairbands, makeup, clothes etc. The true shock for me was the sheer amount of time my husband spends in the lavatory. Prior to the invention of smartphones, many of us kept a small library of bathroom reading material for just this reason. Edit, my pre-2008 preferred reading list. The far side Calvin and Hobbes the Economist. Edit number 2 based upon all the replies. I've come to the conclusion that somewhere in this world there is a chemical engineer who was inspired by reading the names of chemical compounds on the back of shampoo bottles while pooping. Edit number 3 it appears that much of the world's premier innovators in energy. The environment. Biomedicine. Electronics. Food production. And materials are inspired poopers. I thought if I ever moved in with a girl. I'd have to be way less of a slob. Turns out I'm the neat freak in this relationship. Everything went extremely smooth with my girlfriend and I. I attest that to having almost equal levels of cleanliness standards. I see a lot of people commenting on that and I feel very blessed that hasn't been an issue in my life. 
Don't know how I got so lucky with that. But what surprises me and what I fail to understand is the vast amount of time she spends getting ready. I try to understand. But I just don't. She looks beautiful all of the time. But spends an hour and a half to two hours before going out making herself look nice. She looks incredible when she's done of course. But the whole process stresses her out and she has quoted it as a reason why she doesn't want to go out sometimes. Even during little outings with friends she spends the same amount of time getting ready. I'm a numbers type person. That would be just too many of my seconds spent on this earth looking nice for other people I'm not trying to physically attract. I don't press her about it because she has said it's just something she wants needs to do. No matter how long you've been together. Or have known each other. You truly don't know the person. I still love my husband Dilly. But I wish he knew what the laundry hamper is. What an absolute master chef he is. I thought I was a great cook until we moved in together and he started making meals. Blew my own mind. Now I think back to when we first started dating and he would eat my cooking and say it was the best he'd ever had. A little liar. Brings a smile to my face. Edit. Whoa. This blew up. Thank you for the silver. Kind stranger. Never had one of those before. I grew up with a brother so I was pretty well prepared for living with a dude but what surprised me the most was that my boyfriend has no issue leaving things lying around where they do not belong. Dirty plate for example is left on the couch. The mail he just opened ended up on top of the microwave. The towel he dried off with could end up on the kitchen table. Literally no rhyme or reason to the madness. My first roommate was a girl. She was the slobbiest person I've ever met. She had been a co-worker for ages and was always neat at work. It was stunning. Her bedroom was just piles of clothes. The living room was clothes and jackets everywhere. Half drank cups of water. You name it. I loved living with her. It was a very comfy mess. My wife is quite a bit more of a neat freak and has a cute little temper. Sometimes I wanna live like Charlie and Frank. I had that for a year. She works from home. But the television never leaves bravo. I leave for work. Bravo. Come home. Bravo. Go on the elliptical. Bravo. 24 hours hours of these catty women, and sometimes men, yelling at each other. Bravo always being on is like the only thing we fight about. Which is probably a good thing. But Jesus Christ. Always with the bravo. Even when I entertain her and say what show is this? Oh. Southern Charm. I don't really watch that show. Well guess what? I've seen 50 episodes of Southern Charm passively when I come home and I know you've done 20x that. God damn it I hate bravo. I'm getting a divorce. His ability to be doing nothing. He can lay on the couch and stare at the ceiling and do nothing and think nothing. And he enjoys it. I would pull a muscle or pop something from the strain if I tried to do that. Edit. Thanks for the awards. I read it so he can nothing in peace. Sitting in the passenger seat and just stare at the roads. Not saying anything. Why are you so quiet? Are you upset? What's wrong? The audacity. No but real answer is how loud he needs things to be. Every song movie whatever has to be heard from three rooms over. How messy women can be. I mean. There's hair everywhere. The sink looks like a disaster area after she cleans her face at night. Every time she gets water. She gets a new cup and leaves the old one out, not in the sink with other dishes. Her shower has like 27 old bottles of shampoo with a dad amount left in each. There are ponytail holders all over the house. I think the cat won out this morning. But she makes the bed every morning. So I guess it's alright. I grew up with sisters. Nothing surprises me. Bobby pins. There were bobby pins everywhere. On the TV stand. In the couch cushions. Under the bed. On the windowsill. In the fridge. You couldn't turn your head without seeing 15 of those things. For me it was that my boyfriend sheds leg hair. What animal is your partner? 
It's not as hard as everyone told me it would be. That's what she said. But seriously. Understand you don't have to do absolutely everything together since you live together. And respect each other's boundaries. Wants and needs. That one day they will eventually forget to flush a big dump not not check to see if a flushed one went down completely. And that one day. We'll find it and things change forever. We haven't moved in together. And my boyfriend has his own place. It's sterile. It only has the furniture he needs and nothing else. I bought him a little plant. But it gets lost in the vast emptiness. In contrast. My house is full of soft things and it just feels more like a home than a long term hotel. Moving in together would be interesting if he wasn't so wonderfully nice. I had exactly two pillows in my entire house before my, now, wife moved in. He has four just on her side of the bed. There are pillows on the couch. Every chair has a pillow. We have a closet where the top shelf has more pillows. So many iron pillows. Edit. Holy. Gold for a pillow comment. Over 5k upvotes. I guess I'm not alone. Thanks. Stranger. Edit. Found more pillows. Forgot about the ones in the bay window. Edit. Found another a stash of throw pillows in another closet. Wife tells me that. Apparently. We switch the pillows on the couch every season. How many cups accumulate in our bedroom? It's extremely gross. How hard it is to get up in the morning when you have someone to snug. Edit. Holy wow my first medal. Thanks stranger. Snugs for everyone. Going from having 2 pillows on the bed to like 15 or 20. Seriously takes like 5 minutes just to throw all the decorative pillows out of the way before climbing into bed. Going from a bottle of shampoo and a bar of soap in the shower to bottles upon bottles of cream rinses and conditioners and even a big old Luftwaffe sponge hanging in the shower. And forget about ever seeing the top of the bathroom vanity again. And then the knickknacks. Spread all over the place. Useless stuff that seemingly serves no other purpose that to give you more things to have to dust. How many Luftwaffe sponges do you have? Neen. It's actually really hard to effectively shower with another person. I felt so light to buy movies and TV the first time I showered with someone. I was expecting SI soapy fun and instead I was just cold because he's eyeing hot water hog and our shower at the time was small and really hard to maneuver around in. Having SX just felt dangerous. And not fun dangerous. Fall and hit your head dangerous. And water really s with natural lubrication. I also didn't realize how much I need my shower time to peacefully wash my hair and win fictional arguments in my head or try to remember lyrics from songs I haven't heard in 12 years. You need privacy for that. Those hair things girls make with towels after a shower. Her hair goes in the middle of it. Who knew? I will never understand the guys who didn't know that our hair is in the middle. My hair is close to my hips. And one day my boyfriend tried to snag the towel turban off my head and was stunned that there was hair in there. And that it hurt. How little opinions he had on anything. I'd ask what he wants for supper. I don't care. I asked what he wants to do tonight I don't know last week I asked what he thought about getting my nose pierced I don't give a what you do. Sometimes it'd be nice to not have to decide or come up with suggestions all the time. My ex used a wine planet worth of earbuds, q-tips. Like seriously. I would clean the bathroom. The next day. Six of them are sitting out having been used. God forbid I forgot about them because the next day it's 15 sitting out. I'm pretty sure she is living happy somewhere with her lovely bf single handedly killing the planet with her iron ear gunk on those little woolly bastards. She needs reusable ones for any chance of our survival. The amount of toilet paper she goes through. Okay I am a female and I'm gonna explain something. The reason I go through so much TP. Firstly. I wrap my eye tampons in TP when I'm done cause nobody needs to look over and see that nightmare in the garbage while they're using the can. Secondly. We wipe when we pee. When we poop and Jesus Christ. Wiping when you're on your period and pooping is a wine nightmare. 
So yeah. I go through a lot of TP. It happens. How often he scratches or readjusts his junk? Seriously. It's constant. And it's not even subtle. We could be having a serious conversation about our finances and off he goes. Hand down his pants. When I finally called him out for it after months he simply said hey. I gotta scramble the eggs every now and then. What does that even mean? Edit. I'll have to let my boyfriend know his scrambling got me a silver lol thank you. Man's loose scrotum can get stuck to their leg and must be peeled off. And sometimes dick gets stuck to balls in the same way. Also anytime there's an erection. Erections don't comfortably point downward. Men are incredibly warm and sweaty while asleep. And will be sticky if they hug you as you sleep together. Edit. Till that apparently in every relationship there's a furnace and an ice cube. No matter the gender. Obligatory award speech edit. I want to thank whoever gave me silver for indirectly saying my boyfriend is sticky. We're a gay male couple. Just moved in together and oh my lord. Our bedroom always reeks of farts. The whole room and bed sucks that smell right in. Also husband is a big furry man who's deathly scared of bugs and I have who looks more feminine has to always kill them and hear him scream run away. Just how much where a woman is in her menstrual cycle affects her mood. I honestly thought PMS was kind of a myth before moving in with the first woman I lived with. Like I didn't think it was completely made up. But I thought the degree of the effect was overblown. Not really though. They can blow up at you for literally nothing. Realize they're being irrational and still do it anyway with conviction. If you're lucky they might apologize like a week later. But that's more the exception. And it's not just like it's just one sort of mood it causes at this one specific point either. There are a whole range of emotional effects. Positive and negative, but mostly negative. And they occur before, during and after her period. The quick to anger one is just the most unpleasant and well known. I can't imagine having to live like that though. I thank my lucky stars every day I don't have a Vegina. She genuinely doesn't care about me gaming and having a PC room. Even calls it my gaming room. I think she's the one boys. Damn. Reading through this thread made me as a son of a single mother really appreciate how much easier it's gonna be when I move in with a future GF. Thanks mom. Whether did all the toilet paper go? Women seem to have something against empty space. Bare floor? Put some carpet on that. Floor already has carpet? Put an area rug on that mofo. Make sure it's freely and decorative too. Empty space in the living areas? That's nothing some new furniture can't solve. Doesn't matter if it serves no functional purpose whatsoever. And it doesn't matter if you need to shuffle sideways just to get through the living room. We still need it. Oh. And don't forget to decorate the furniture with fancy runners. Placemats. Bejeweled knickknacks. And. Also. We need loads of tableware. Most of which we'll never use. We just need to be ready in case the Queen of England stops by. Last. Don't forget to regularly complain about how hard it is to keep everything clean. Clothes cover our bedroom floor. Clean. Dirty. In between. The amount of toilet paper used easily tripled. Maybe quadrupled. That it bothers me to be kissed goodnight while I'm lying in bed. It's fine to kiss him before I go to bed but when he kisses me when I'm lying down I feel like I'm being tucked in. I like that feeling. My husband had never known what it was like to pull a strand of hair out of your butt crack until we started living together. And I had never known just how flatulent my husband is. The amount of time you spend shouting what? From different rooms in the house. Having to time gauge your hunger with theirs. My husband unintentionally fasts like a 17 year old model trying out for the Victoria's Secret fashion show. He never. Eats. Anything. I'm convinced his entire daily calorie intake is from beer. He goes all day without eating a thing. Then announces I'm starving. At 3pm like yeah. No. 
Meanwhile I'm a snacky McGrazer hobbit eating little meals around the clock. I guarantee I consume more calories than he does. It's maddening to try to keep up with him in terms of starving myself and then suddenly eating one meal for the day. Especially now that I'm pregnant. It has become a logistical nightmare to sync up our hunger and desire to eat. Just eat like I do damn it. The pet peeves you never knew were there. For example. He doesn't like when I leave eggshells in the sink without pushing it into the garbage disposable. I don't like when he keeps getting new glasses of water because he misplaced his glass from an hour ago. They're little things. But I was so surprised how passionate I was about glassware. He doesn't take the initiative to kill the creepy crawlies that waywardly stray into our apartment. If he sees a house centipede he looks at it. Then promptly turns tail and walks away. Won't even tell me the damn thing is there. I'm a girl who grew up having to call dad to kill spiders and bugs and so it's weird that I now have to be the one to viciously murder every insect who comes inside. My husband kills them and then leaves them there. I've had to ask him to please remove the spider corpses.